Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we are at the Endoscopic Cardiac Surgeons Club meeting in Northern Kentucky. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Mark Gilinov, who is the chairman of cardiac surgery at the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Dr. Gilinov, you and I have known each other for a long time. It is great to see you again. Thanks for being with me. My pleasure. Yeah, so we're here, we're learning a lot all about minimally invasive techniques. We're also getting questions from patients coming at us. One of them is all about transcatheter, mitral valve, in-valve procedures. Mm -hmm. Can you share with the patients, what are the latest updates on this technique? Sure, the valve in valve procedure, what we're talking about is somebody got a tissue valve, a bioprosthetic valve, usually a pig valve or a cow valve previously. And these valves, these cow and pig valves will usually last around 10 years. I've seen seven years, I've seen 22 years, but let's say you got a pig valve and now uh, it's 10 years later and it's wearing out, you need a new one. How are we gonna get a new valve in there? And there are two ways. One way is traditional surgery where we make our incision and it could be through the side, through the front. We take the old valve out surgically and put a new valve in. And your choice, you could get a tissue valve or a mechanical valve. Second way that's newer is what you said, a valve in valve. What that means is we take a new valve and we compress it or fold it like an umbrella. So it's very thin. We thread it up a vein in your leg into the heart and then deploy it in the housing of the old pig valve, like opening the umbrella. Why does that work? Because the pig valves and the cow valves are generally circular. So they're a circle. It's a perfect landing zone to open that new valve, like opening a round umbrella, and it stays where we put it. What does that mean? It means that if you've got a worn out bioprosthetic valve, a worn out pig valve or a worn out cow valve, you should definitely ask your cardiologist and your surgeon, how should I get my new one? Am I a candidate for the less invasive valve and valve procedure? Or is there something about my anatomy and my previous valve that means heart surgery is gonna be a better option for me? It's not a one's better than the other, it's really a what's the best for you. Great, and I've gotta ask you a follow-up. Some of these valve and valve techniques are relatively new in the field of cardiac therapy. Do we have any data about the durability and the performance of these valve and valve procedures? That is the real big question. I mean, you just hit on it. These valve and valve procedures where we put a new valve inside the housing of an old valve are pretty new. And we do not know how long those valves are going to last. At three, four years, they're looking all right, um, but what does that mean? It means to me, if, if I'm 60 or 65 or perhaps 70, I'd probably opt for a new surgical valve that I know is probably gonna last my whole life. On the other hand, if I'm 80 years old and I've got a pig or a cow valve that wore out, I'd probably be thinking, let me try the valve and valve. Great, well, on behalf of the patients in our community, patients all over, over the world, Dr. Yelanov, thanks for this update on transcatheter valve and valve procedures for the mitral valve. And thanks to everything you and your team are doing at the Cleveland Clinic. Thanks for being with me today. My pleasure. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen, or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.